Wizards, kings, shepherds. In games, they all have quests. But how do they put the quests in there? You could hard code it all, but that is a very bad idea. So the other option is embedded scripting, where your game effectively reads in some text files and figures out what to do from there on the fly, without ever touching the engine's code. Believe it or not, I don't hate myself, and so originally I decided to use a scripting language some people much smarter than me had already made. Mono, the language Unity uses to try replace hard coding entirely, is open source, so I could use that, and it explains why you would want to quite succinctly here. The worst kind of language tends to be the in-house custom language. These in-house ad hoc languages tend to be quick hacks that evolve over the lifetime of a program. I've made some shitty scripts before and there were some ugly shortcuts taken for sure. The authors of those languages are not language designers or experts in language design nor compiler developers, so their languages suffer as a result. Can confirm. The languages tend to be slow, buggy, poorly documented and packed with quirks. All of this very true. But this is where we hit a problem. Easy support for calling your native code, they say. Extern start string C++ stop string decl spec open bracket DLL export close bracket I say in front of every function and class, and even then the compiler throws some stuff at you because it looks like Mono expects my beautiful engine to be the tool for it to use, you cocky shit. Using this was a very bad idea. Let's go back to what Mono says, not language designers. I've done a few courses so far in my degree, I have experience making two or three increasingly bitter, although still hellaciously bad, scripting languages, so I just need to make something simpler this time. So I used all my experience to design my easy to use and interface scripting language, and with what I want overplanned and how I'm going to do it horrifically underplanned, with way too much confidence, and while watching the entire Lord of the Rings extended edition with my housemate, I hopped right into it. This too was a very bad idea. It turns out that making a simple system is the most complicated thing to do. The code is technically finished, but it was when I was trying to write a compiler for it that all my bad choices came back to bite me. Spaghetti flow of consciousness code, over complex internal structures, the bad design of the language itself for compiling, this is just over complicated. Remember, wizards and quests. And it was while watching the entire Lord of the Rings extended edition with my new housemates Sam! that I found the solution. Just remove any complication at all. A equals B plus 5. Look at this, you have to find variables, operators, what's, what's a, a user function, defined what's variable. an inbuilt variable. Where's the end of the line? No, not simple at all. Assign A, add B5. So easy. Look how quick you can split it up. May not be as easy to read at a glance, but like, wizards and quests, who cares? I got to work and finished what I will call node call, because it has nodes of execution that you hop between like a huge flowchart. There are now only two types to deal with. One is objects, which can be numbers, strings, little packets of complicated C++ stuff that it can't touch, and executable functions. These functions take in two lists of objects. The other is intrinsic functions, that take in a list of objects and themselves return an object. Because of this, I made it so that instead of raw objects, these executable functions take in object references, so it can store a raw value, a name that it can use to look up an object in a global symbol table or an intrinsic function, because all of these result in objects in the end. Then each line is just an object that will be called as a function. To go back to the last example I gave, assign, look that up in the symbol table, run the C++ function in it. A, look that up, ah, here it is, add, well that's an intrinsic function, let's see, B, here it is, and 5. Let's make an object with the value 5, run add, here's the result, set the value at A to be this new result. No complicated operator symbols, local variables, anything. If statements and while works too, because if the first argument they're given is true, you take the second list of objects and you just run those as if they were a subprogram. For loops have a bunch of messy commands in them, so sadly they're out. To add any C++ functions to this, you just have to make it a little wrapper that takes in objects and then assign that wrapper to a place in the symbol table. It's that simple. No decal spec or in time compiling or anything. If you wanted to make this language strictly Turing complete because there's no inbuilt ability to do recursion, you'd have to do some funky things with putting stacks in these anonymous packages and adding some functions to let you do stuff with it and implementing your own cool stack, but that's 
way too complicated. This isn't meant to be used for some long form computation, this is for wizards and quests. If there's something complicated to do, just write it in C++ and plug it in. Obviously, for the sake of time, I'm leaving some stuff out, like the return types of executable functions, how the runtime's been engineered to run in parallel with the game, and how it's able to pause execution until it's stalled to start again, stuff like that. This is all just magic in the background. Here are the stats of it doing some calculations on its own, versus using C++ and raw C++. And now, here is it running a little cutscene in-game. The second you enter this room, you might be able to tell that a scripted event is about to happen. In fact, there is a trigger just beyond that corridor, right here. See? A cinematic event happens. You can no longer get out, the blocks have moved, and all the enemies have been activated. The only way out? Kill the enemies. Now, this is rather simple because I haven't given the enemies any, you know, commands or attack patterns yet. But as you can see, after killing them, the script detects that, opens it up, you're now free to leave. Now, this showcases some of the abilities that this script can now have. For example, moving entities down, sending events to other entities telling them to do things like activate, tracking the state of an entity, moving and changing what the camera's looking at, activating a cinematic mode, and so on. Obviously in a game, this script might follow along with someone popping out and thanking you for saving their village, or creating a portal to go somewhere else, but I haven't done that yet, because this is just a tech demo. It also provides me opportunities to change things in the game without having to go back and recompile the code. As you can see here, this lovely enemy is just moving about in a square. This is another scripted event. However, the camera is also changing, and maybe I don't want that. So, all I need to do is leave the room, go edit the script, change some stuff here and there, and walk back into the room. Just that change, without me having to go in and change any engine code at all, allows me to now watch my enemy walk in a square in peace. And those are the two examples, that's the scripting language. I can attach more things later on down the line when I think they're necessary, and that's the advantage I guess of making my own over using anyone else's. It can be custom for me with everything I need for it. Anyway, I hope you'll follow along as I add something next time as well. See you then!